Thank, thank you, you for you. joining us, thank uh, you, Khalil. Thank you. Yes, a warm round of applause. Thank you. Let's sit down and let's have a chat about uh, connectivity uh, from and to Saudi Arabia. Is your Excellent. mic working? I'm not sure yet. Can you hear Khalil? Yes? It's working? All right. Excellent. Thank you. Fantastic. So let's start with the obvious. Uh, what is the Saudi Air Connectivity Program? Could you tell us a bit more about this? Sure. Thank you, Olivier. First, I would like to congratulate you for the, for the very good presentation, very thank informative, uh, really good data. And uh, thank you to the organizer for inviting me. Um, the Air Connectivity Program is a very unique uh, initiative that has been um, uh, part initially of, uh, of the national tourism, tourism strategy b back in 2019. Uh, it has evolved from being uh, an air connectivity fund to being an air connectivity program. The main mandate of the program is to enable an air connectivity in the region. Uh, this is actually segmented in three ma main pillars that we are focusing on. One is enabling and enhancing air connectivity but by looking at all what uh, is a prerequisite for a healthy air connectivity. Uh, uh, the ease of doing business, passenger experience, the, the capacity of airports. So in collaboration with GACA, the Civil Aviation Authority of Saudi Arabia, we're looking at accelerating uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the solution or the resolution of the problems or the challenges that we're having from an air connectivity perspective to make any route that is going to be established sustained. This is one of the key uh, mandates of the program. The second, the second pillar of our mandate is uh, mainly to be actively uh, developing new routes, uh, increasing capacity in the, in the kingdom for all the 28 airports, mainly focusing on tourism air connectivity. And the third part of the mandate is actually to, uh, to uh, engage or align stakeholders on anything related to air connectivity. Air connectivity, fortunately, is part of the agenda of many government entities, uh, and they needed eventually an entity that will be uh, uh, collaborating with all these stakeholders in order to make sure that we are pulling all in the right direction for the greater benefit of the kingdom. So those are, in summary, the three main objectives of the program. Okay. Well, it's a very recent program, right? Yes. Uh, started June last year? Exactly. The, last year uh, was the establishment, the official establishment of the program by uh, a royal decree. Uh, from last year, we've been very busy establishing it legally, uh, uh, legislatively, uh, and uh, right now we have finalized, obviously, the recruitment of our MPV, the critical roles uh, of the program, and we are already active in developing new routes uh, for the kingdom, and that, that will be announced very soon in the next few weeks. Well, actually, uh, seen from the, from the outside, uh, you were very... Uh, discreet, let's say, uh, last, last year, but uh, you've been in the news, all over the news uh, very recently with some announcements regarding the ambitions yes. of, the, of the program. And yes, you are going the to communicate later about, uh, about new routes, but you've already communicated on some of the achievements of the, of the program and the direction that you wanted to take, right? Th that's exact. That's exact. We started our communication. I would say this is still a very soft uh, uh, awareness campaign, I would say. Uh, once, maybe in, in a week or so, or two weeks, we are going to have our brand identity finalized, whereby we will be more visible to the industry and more visible to our future partners. Right now, we're doing more a below, below the line type of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, marketing uh, targets. Uh, so we talk to the airlines directly. We do not necessarily have yet a very uh, broad visibility as we would like it to be. But uh, in a few weeks, this is, will be, um, the program will be more visible and we will, you will see us eventually all over the place. Okay. Well, one of the things that uh, have already been communicated to the, to the press is that you had this, this strategy of, uh, of a dual hub, yes. right? Could you tell us a bit more about this? Uh, definitely. Uh, I guess the dual hub strategy was a natural decision by the government uh, of, uh, of Saudi Arabia. Uh, when you look at it, uh, the Saudi airline has been operating in, in various uh, uh, airports. And uh, obviously, from a hub perspective, they've been focusing on Jeddah, Jeddah airports, as well as some international destination uh, in, uh, in Riyadh. Uh, when you look at the ambition of, uh, of Vision 2030 of the Kingdom when it comes to tourism particularly and when it comes to, to aviation sector, 
uh, as well. Uh, you look at, from a tourism perspective, we're targeting 100 million visitors by uh, 2030. Uh, and then to be eventually the, the top, a part of the top five most visited countries in the world. This is a very ambitious. Uh, we're looking at increasing the number of passengers from uh, about 100 million back in 2019 to 330 million back, uh, in 2030. So this is tripling the number of passengers, even if we had COVID in the middle, but still the target is still the target. Uh, the number of destinations are, are meant eventually to increase from 100 destinations to 250 destinations. So all of these are very, very ambitious targets. If we focus, if we keep eventually the same type of operation, having Saudi driving mainly, uh, uh, or one hub driving mainly this strategy, you are going to be failing. So, so uh, the strategy, the logic of the strategy is to have uh, Saudi focusing on Jeddah hub and then have another airline focusing on Riyadh hub because those are going to be the main gateway in order to achieve the, the, the tourism strategy and achieve, achieve obviously the numbers that we are targeting. So, so it's a matter of focus, it's a matter of centralizing eventually the growth in, in specific hubs of the kingdom uh, and then reducing the risk. So Saudi will concentrate in one hub and the new airline will concentrate on the second hub. Okay, you briefly mentioned COVID. Uh, yeah. We've gone through a, a very tough the region. The world has gone through a very tough period. Yes. Um, what have you learned from uh, from this pandemic, uh, and how does this influence maybe mm. the, the way you think of connectivity for the for the kingdom? Very interesting question. I believe uh, there are there are many learnings. Uh, uh, the first one that is very obvious is that governments worldwide are disconnected. Uh, they, they are not collaborating sufficiently enough in order to make uh, a pandemic, uh, uh, you know, managed efficiently. So we saw that in terms of uh, uh, the policies. We saw that in terms of the restrictions, the communication platforms. Uh, I believe uh, to that particularly, the government has been, or the government of Saudi Arabia has been uh, 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 thinking for forward by uh, suggesting a, a policy uh, with ICAO to harmonize tra travel in general and then make sure that we are better prepared at the world level to address similar pandemics. This has been uh, uh, issued or, or announced two weeks ago in the Future Aviation Forum, uh, and it is a very ambitious, I believe, uh, um, uh, you know, initiative to align communication and align protocols and then making sure that uh, uh, the passenger or the, the visitor will have a clear uh, you know, information when, when they visit. Because we know today that the main, the, one of the main issues of travel not rebounding is the, is the confusion in terms of the restrictions. Uh, this is, was one of the learning, and then it has also been addressed. The other learning, purely from an air connectivity perspective, is the necessity to be agile. We can't have a strategy, uh, and then we keep on having a long-term strategy, and then we close our eyes and our ears, and then just implement it. Uh, so, so this basically... Uh, taught us that we needed eventually to listen to the market on the spot, uh, being reactive and prompt to react, and then having decision make a uh, fast decision uh, uh, making processes that will allow us to take advantage on what's going on and address the risks on the spot. So this is, this is something that uh, we have embedded in the way how we are making decisions in terms of where to go, who to attract, and then who to work with. I believe from an airline perspective, there is now a strong focus on, on profitability from a yield perspective perspective, uh, uh, and that actually allows the program to target the right airlines uh, at the right moment by making sure that when we propose a destination, we have a solid business case that shows uh, 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 the right profitability of the airline for them in order to choose or to prefer the destination uh, that we are going to be promoting rather than the other one. So those are the three learners that I would say. Well, I understand that you, can tell, you can't tell us all about the, uh, the key markets you're mm. working on, but could you give us an, an indication of the time type of travelers that uh, you'd like to bring to the kingdom and um, how this influences the way you work with airlines? Uh, definitely. I guess, I guess the, the air connectivity program, as I said earlier, the first mandate is really to enable uh, tourism industry. Uh, we would like eventually, like in a, in a very uh, summarized statement, we, would, we do not want air connectivity to be a bottleneck to, to tourism. Uh, taking that into consideration, our main markets or target markets are, dr are driven by the target markets from a tourism perspective. Uh, initially, the quick wins uh, are the 49 countries uh, with e-visa. 
uh, that has been eventually established back in 2019. Uh, I, I need to mention also that uh, when we look at tourism numbers, the 100 million that we uh, are targeting by 2030, this includes both religious tourism, domestic tourism, and international tourism. That being said, religious tourism is also, uh, or, or religious traffic is also uh, one of our targets to make sure, obviously, that uh, uh, we, we maximize obviously, the traffic from, uh, from Omra perspective from, and then facilitate it when it comes to, uh, to what needs to be done in the ground. Uh, but purely from a leisure perspective, I said, I mentioned before the 49 markets, uh, when it comes to the product on the ground, I believe Saudi Arabia has a lot to offer. So we do not necessarily target a particular type Type of visitor, uh, uh, you know, the tourism uh, products that are that are being developed right now ranges from wellness product, heritage, cultural heritage products, sand and sea, they are pristine, uh, uh, sea co uh, uh, beaches and costs eventually in the, in, in the country. A lot of, a lot of uh, programs or, or, or uh, projects have been launched like the Red Sea, Amala, which are going to be focusing on a certain type of, uh, of tourist. Uh, backpackers as well are part of our focus. So uh, I believe the kingdom, and then you, you'll see it eventually for, uh, in these in this, uh, two days, and then obviously also uh, in the, the various awareness campaigns that the, 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 the Saudi Tourism Authority has been doing, uh, the kingdom will have a product for every type of passenger. When it comes to, um, to the air connectivity program, this is very important because depending on the destinations that we are going to be uh, promoting for uh, air connectivity, we will uh, uh, make sure that the right information is communicated to the airlines to know what is the right mix of, uh, of uh, passengers in the aircraft. So that being said, I believe the variability of, of the passengers uh, make it less risky rather than having all only one type of passenger, so so the plane will be mixed. So this is this yes, is basically our objective. As a, as a way to get resilience for this destination it, it, and uh, stronger pillars to um, to grow. Exactly, definitely, right. and and that's the aim. Well, I think it's uh, it's very important for the destination to be strong and to have those uh, those different pillars because yes. as we've seen earlier today, the competition in the region is is fierce. It, indeed. Uh, so. Yeah, do you think there's room in, well, that's a bit of a rhetorical question, yeah. but uh, <laughs> do, you think, do you think there's room for a, a new hub in the region, a new airline in the, in the region? And how are you going to uh, address this issue of uh, very strong competing destinations in the, in the region? Are you going to, to go for a, a really tough stance and tough competition, or are you also thinking of ways to collaborate with some of the destinations in the Middle East and beyond? Thank you for the question. I guess uh, the competition is fierce, uh, both from an aviation perspective and a tourism perspective, definitely. Uh, and, and I believe this should not be a stopper for any country to have such an ambition to have their own airline uh, developing their own hub. Uh, uh, we can, we can uh, basically, when you look at the data, uh, there is uh, a, a good proportion of traffic that is currently uh, uh, flying one stop from, from Saudi. So in order to optimize uh, the tourism traffic, we need to maximize the, the non-stop operation. So this is one of the reasons why I believe uh, having a new airline out of Riyadh is a kind of a no-brainer, despite the, despite the competition that, 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 that we have around. So I, I, actually, the existence of the airline uh, is, is important for the success of the ambition, as opposed to looking who are we competing with. Uh, I believe, on, on your second point, I believe competition is inevitable. Uh, and this is to the benefit of the consumer at the end. Having a better product, better pricing, better choices, this is inevitable. So uh, a healthy competition is needed, uh, and, and, and the, 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 the market, or, the, or how can I say that, the catchment area is the world. So we're talking about 80% uh, of the world population is within eight, uh, eight hours flying time from Saudi Arabia. So we're not talking about competition within a very close market, we're talking about a world competition, focusing on our target as a kingdom as opposed to stealing uh, market share from from the region, so it is it is essential to have this airline. It is essential to for for our targets. Uh, but at the same time, I believe in, addi in addition to the to the healthy competition, there is also a need for collaboration. So I believe the fact that the kingdom is energizing the tourism industry will benefit also the region. So so a product like like complementary destinations will be will be the norm here. So rather than uh, focusing on bringing a passenger to Saudi Arabia only, maybe there is a room to 
connect uh, Saudi Arabia with a nearby destination in, uh, in, in the region and then have a passenger uh, uh, test eventually the flavor of different destinations within the region. So a US passenger coming uh, to Saudi Arabia with all these ultra long, long haul flights that, that, that they are going eventually to be spending would not necessarily uh, be uh, sufficiently, how can I say that, pleased by only visiting one destination. So there is a room to energize, I would say, the, the other destinations and collaborate with them uh, in order to make a better product. So, so as I said earlier, competition is, is necessary for the benefit of the consumer, but at the same time, we believe that no. there will be an additional stimulation of the market by having an energized country as Saudi Arabia developing a, an untapped demand from a tourism perspective. Well, and I think there's a, there's a key asset that you haven't mentioned. It's the strength of the domestic market, exactly. which is not but something okay. that, that competitors in the region can yeah. host. Definitely. This is a very good point, and I believe this goes back to the discussion about uh, about uh, uh, you know whether whether uh, it is the right choice or not. Uh, I believe one of the key strengths of uh, of the kingdom is having a very strong domestic market. Not only that, but it's uh, also a very strong outbound market. When we talked about diversity of passengers uh, uh, earlier, uh, while we focused, in, I focused in my answer on inbound passenger. There is also a, a very good uh, proportion of the flight that is get, that is going to be protected by the outbound demand, uh, which makes obviously the case a little bit easier to sell to airline uh, from a risk perspective and from a profitability perspective because demand is already there. Yeah, clearly. Uh, looking at the very ambitious objectives of the, of the program, one question uh, comes to mind, and that is, how are you going to measure success? What are your, your key metrics? There are, there are a number of metrics that we had that we are tracking right now uh, uh, from an air connectivity perspective. One of the metrics is the global air connectivity index, and then we have an index for the kingdom, and that's being tracked. Uh, but I believe uh, the other, uh, I would say, qualitative uh, uh, index that we are also, or, or measures that we are also uh, uh, aiming to, uh, to track is to ensure, obviously, that air connectivity is not a bottleneck to our tourism target uh, uh, in, in a way that that uh, if demand is generated by our tourism authority or uh, Saudi tourism authority and there is no sufficient uh, uh, capacity, uh, then eventually we're not doing our, our, our role uh, appropriately. So we want obviously the air capacity to be uh, at the forefront in terms of the product offering and then generate the demand to fill that capacity. So, so, so the, the, easy, the easy way to answer this question if we want to measure success is going to be the number of routes, the number of, uh, of seats from a target perspective perspective, but it is more complex because there are also some quantitative uh, uh, you know, measures, qualitative measures that we're tracking as well uh, in relation, for example, as I said earlier, to the engagement of, of our key stakeholders uh, for us to pull in the same direction, uh, the, the number of seats and, and other, other uh, KPIs that we're tracking as well. Yeah, I think coordination will be absolutely key. Eh? It's not, Definitely. Um, I mean, you've mentioned the issue of a, of a bottleneck, which will not be an issue, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also important that once those routes are developed, someone picks up the ball and, and makes sure that, uh, that those planes are, are full because yes. there's enough uh, supply and the destination is attractive enough. So it's going to, to be teamwork here. Exactly. So one of the KPIs that the program will be tracking, for example, is the brand index or the, the brand awareness of the kingdom as, as, a, as a, an entity. And this is obviously a KPI that is tracked by our Saudi Tourism Authority as the, as a, the promoter or the destination marketing entity. But for the benefit of the program, making sure that when we are creating a new route, that the right activations are in place in order to make it a success, especially if the route is focused on leisure traffic. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, we are also going to be tracking the experience of passengers in that route from an airport perspective, the way how they are being treated, the, head, the, the way how our, our direct uh, customers are also being treated whether it's the passenger or the airline, so to make sure that the entire ecosystem uh, is enhanced to sustain routes. So this is, this is a, a core element in the aviation sector strategy already that GACA is leading, our civil aviation authority, but at the same time, we play it a little bit more selfishly, and then we look at it only from an air connectivity perspective, and then we have identified the pillars that we need to be following in order to make the route sustainable after it is being launched. 
Okay, so data will be key. Data uh, is is key. Of of course, we can't we can't we can't work without data, especially in that field. Uh, uh, and then I believe uh, not only data, but the way how you digest data. So data is available. There are many data sets. There are uh, uh, you know we are connected to airports. Uh, the civil aviation authority is sharing a lot of data. Airlines will be sharing data, and we are subscribed uh, in a number of databases. But but the key here is not only to get data, but to uh, uh, basically come up with insights from this data and then making sure that we are using it promptly. So as you have seen, event, as you have shown uh, in your presentation, uh, there are some decisions that, that, that needs to be done in a very short time, and that's what's going to be critical for the program as well. Okay. Talking about uh, short time, uh, yeah. we have less than one minute to go. Sure. Uh, are there some key messages that you would like to, uh, uh, to send to airlines to convince them that uh, the kingdom is the place to be. Uh, I, I believe, I believe uh, it, is, it is natural. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the kingdom is booming. The economy is energized. Uh, we have an untapped opportunity from a tourism perspective. Uh, there are uh, plenty of products to see in Saudi Arabia. Uh, very generous and hospitable people. Uh, uh, the, 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 um, how can I say that? The microeconomics principles are very solid, uh, very stable currency. Uh, I believe this is the opportunity to engage with the kingdom, to operate, and then to take advantage of, of this journey. Uh, it is a, a one-time window opportunity. It's the hotspot of the Middle East, and we're looking forward to working with them to make, uh, to make it a win-win situation. All right. Thank you very much, Khalil. This is a fantastic way to close this panel. It's been a pleasure sharing this stage with you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.